Welcome, welcome to another genre art with JB, and today we are going to look at the Frank Riley palette for painting flesh tones. So to get started, we have Ivory Black, Titanium White, Burnt Umber, Cadmium Red, Cadmium Orange, and Alizarin Crimson. Now I should start by saying that this palette is the best palette, in my opinion, for painting flesh tones. And it's a palette I started using within the last year. Before this, I was using the Zorn Limited palette, which is also a very good palette, and a palette that I would recommend for beginner artists. And what the appeal of this palette is, is it allows you to uh, paint any combination of flesh tones and also gives you the correct range of values, how light or dark a shape is that correspond with each of those flesh tones. So it helps you get your values correct, and that's the main appeal of this palette, um, while allowing you to paint any or uh, infinite uh, combination of flesh tones. What I've just done is uh, put down some titanium white and some ivory black on my palette. I'm using a gray matters palette. I find this palette works best for helping judge the color. And what I'm doing is putting down what we call a gray line, a line along the top of my palette here, which indicates the transition of values from light to dark. So I start with a little bit of black next to a lot of white. And as I work my way down the line, I add more black and less white. And you can see I'm just getting that sort of light gray. That's my lightest value. So uh, more white, less gray, and then as we continue down the line, that, that uh, relationship is inverted. So as we continue down that line, we have more um, black and less white. I know before I said more white, less gray, but I meant to say uh, less black until we get to almost true black. And so there you go, you have a complete value scale, and there are six different values there that we can play with. Next, we're going to do what we call a, an orange line using the cadmium orange. Now, we are going to use white and cad orange up to the second lightest value, and then after that, we will be combining our cadmium orange with burnt umber. Uh, I want to stress that past that third value, we do not add white to our orange line anymore. Um, the reason being it will get muddy very quick. Um, you want to just use uh, more white for that first value, value a little uh, considerably less white and more cat orange for that second value, which is what I just did. And then going forward, we are going to add equal parts cat orange and burnt umber or if, if that's too much, if it's too dark, what you can do is just scale back on that burnt umber, maybe do two thirds cat orange, one third or one fourth burnt umber. And then um, from there, you are going to increase the amount of burnt umber that you add it down that value scale. And so you can see I have a progression in the orange color key going from light to dark. And this palette will help you give help give you um, basically an average of what what your um, reference is. So some uh, uh, artists, as they're doing this, will reference their own sort of flesh tone on their arm or their face. If uh, I tend to use the uh, go off the photo reference that I'm using, and you can see at that last rung, we're adding not so much cad orange and much more burnt umber. Now we're doing what we call a red line. So we have a gray line on the top, an orange line in the middle, and we are doing a red line on the bottom. And again, um, things to remember for the orange line, uh, past that second value, you're no longer adding white, you're adding burnt umber. And on the red line, you're going to be adding white and cad red for the first two values. Um, and then for that third value, that's going to be straight cad red and past that third value, you're going to be adding a 50-50 mixture of burnt umber and alizarin crimson into the cad red that you have that you have on your gray matters palette. So, that fourth, starting with that fourth value from the darkest uh, tone, you can see I just added that 50-50 solution into my cadmium red. 
and I'm going to add less cadmium red and more 50-50 solution as I work my way down towards that darkest tone. And that 50-50 solution is, again, uh, alizarin crimson and burnt umber. The first two values are adding mostly white with a little bit of cad red, and then the second value is going to be maybe a third white uh, with mostly cad red to get that sort of light red tone, and then the third value is just straight cad red out of the tube. And you can see that that last value of red is really the darkest possible red that you can achieve um, in, in your flesh tones using this palette. Just cleaning uh, with a little bit of linseed oil, cleaning my palette off. This can get a little messy. And you can see I have a grid here. Now what I want to do is I want to go down the line of each value. So I'm going to take a little, I'm going to take equal parts gray, equal parts peach, equal parts uh, pink there and form my lightest flesh tone. And you're going to do this with each uh, value of your flesh, flesh tone. So you can see I now have that second darkest, second lightest value of my flesh tone, my third lightest value of my flesh tone, and then going down to my fourth lightest, and then second darkest from the darkest. And what this gives me is it gives me a gradation of flesh tones from light to dark, and it gives me an average of all these colors with gray added. And the reason you want to have that gray worked in there is because in nature, flesh is muddy. It's not we don't get this these deeply deep saturated colors in nature. We get a little bit of mud and grit to colors that exist in nature. So that gray gives it that sort of mud. What I'm now doing is adding a little bit of walnut oil. You can also use a little oil of cloves to my palette to help extend it. It'll prevent the palette from drying up on you. Just adding a little bit of that oil of cloves. And really, this is it. This is how you would do the Riley palette. So thank you, everybody, and have a great day. I hope you found this useful. Until next time, bye-bye.